Welcome back to my garage. Last time you saw me working on uh, making some uh, linear slide engine mounts for this uh, special CVT system to work. I've got a secret behind my back. It's not going to be a sliding uh, linear rail setup. Starting off this video practicing my uh, vlogging game. I'm on my way to pick up some lock ring things for this. I'm also going to pick up an ND filter because uh, this is probably overexposed. At least if I move out into the sun. And this camera has a flip down screen which interferes with the uh, uh, tripod or gimbal. It means I'm probably not framed very well. Top-notch vlogging content. Picked up the snap rings for the bearing block and now to get that variable ND filter. I could stop down the lens but I'm not an animal. I'm parked outside a shopping mall. I'm gonna pick up a gift for my youngest son. It's his birthday in a week. plan is to walk and talk to the camera on my way there in the shop and uh, <laughs> like vlogging. I'm not sure what it is that makes this so incredibly hard. It might be the that it's engraved in the in my Norwegian jeans to not stick out. But uh, what do I care what other people think? <laughs> well, obviously I do care because uh, I'm sweating. <laughs> I usually talk much louder than this, but uh, it's so awkward. I'm trying to find that shop. It's a Barnas Hus, I think it's called. Got what I came for. <laughs> There's people. I can't do it. I got what I came for. And, uh, I think. I think what I need to do is pretend I'm American. If I can fool myself to feel like I'm an American, it won't be that awkward. the video ended when I started working on a design for having these mounted like this in a sliding arrangement. Then after flipping the radiator I realized there's now room for the pipe with a swinging engine. We're gonna use one of these as the swing mount. With just one variable pulley, a fixed rear pulley, you either have to live with the belt being out of alignment everywhere except one point in the transmissioning or you'll have to make the engine be able to slide in and out whilst swinging or sliding up and down, back and forth. You can also make this slide in and out. Using one of these as the swing mount, it can both swing and slide in and out. I was trying to figure out some other arrangement for the sliding engine to have it self-aligned. This takes care of both things in one, uh, one thing. 
This single variated setup with a fixed rear pulley is not something experimental. It's actually the transmission system I have the most experience with. It's where I started. If you scroll way back to my first video, you'll see a Peugeot SPX with a, a swinging engine. It's common in small CC French bikes and it's a really cool system because you can add a launch lever. You gain manual control over RPM where it's working through the range. You can also force it to stay in first gear when you engage the clutch. Launch lever. <laughs> cool if there was room for the pipe through here I think there is room <laughs> it's too fat but this would have been cool <laughs> this is first gear more than final gear there's room there's room now perfect I've been contemplating various ways of tensioning the belt. My first idea was a spring here. This area is kind of crowded. My second idea was to use this spring, which comes from the Peugeot SPX, which originally has this kind of a engine tensioning system. It's supposed to sit like this. So this is connected to the engine, can slide up and down. It bends like this, like the engine bends it like this that would be simple but this is probably not stiff enough i thought about making a kind of a lever arm here and then having that spring mounted here there's lots of room and this would provide more adjustability you can move the spring and change the angle of attack on both ends Don't tell my kids. Came up with something much simpler with lots of adjustability. By varying the base tension and uh, where it's uh, hooked up to the frame, we have infinite adjustability. And we can add more springs if one is not enough. There's an abundance of them on that trampoline. <laughs>
Let's try the face mill, it's been a while. These inserts are meant for hard material, steel. They're too dull for aluminium, but uh, it's been a long while, I want to see how it behaves. fairly hot due to the dull insert. The reason I'm usually using a small end mill for facing is because the machine isn't perfectly trammed and this uh, averages out the, the scoops. Seems to be better than I remembered. It's, uh, it's not noticeable by, by eye at least. Were the best fitting ones I could find. They're a little bit too tight. Let's use some old piston rings. There's not like there's any side load on this anyways. And we're putting on some Loctite. We went down. shift this block a little bit inwards in the frame. Align these two surfaces when this is at its maximum travel inwards. I ran out of time today. Tomorrow we'll make this spacer thinner, shift the engine further towards the center of the frame to align the belt, make some spacers for the rest of this subframe. Now, we're getting close. Maybe not the most beautiful uh, engine mount. <laughs> I just remember this can be shifted forward, which means we'll have even more room. Mm. That's great because there's more room for the pipe. And the card will now start off at a little bit too steep angle and end up at not so much too shallow of an angle as opposed to earlier, which is great. Plenty of room now. Awesome.
Hoping the death trap don't mind, I'm lending out its whole fuel system. A 50cc Speedway chopper. I'll clean up the table and uh, we'll try starting it. The carb is currently in death trap configuration. I'm hoping it'll start and somewhat run, regardless. We're ready to start it up and uh, see how the transmission system behaves. I'm missing a 14mm bolt for the swing arm. There's a 12mm in there now. I need to go pick that up later today. And depending on how efficient I can be at editing tonight, we might get a little uh, dyno test run in, in this video tomorrow. That's if I have time. Crossing fingers. I'll need a hose clamp here. I got the water. the door and turn on the exhaust extraction it's all the way over there though it probably doesn't help much but uh a little bit it's running lean so just for testing now i'll uh i'll tape up the velocity stack just make sure it doesn't get ingested now let's see how it behaves now Now you saw how this works. Now the tension of the spring and the weight of the rollers decides which RPM the variator is variating at. Fine tuned, you can stay at max power all the time. Plan for running on the dyno is running too heavy weight. So that it will gear out completely and then we'll start a run. In that way the ratio will be fixed. Let's see if I can get what I've filmed up until now edited today. And then we'll have time for uh, some dyno runs tomorrow. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I couldn't find a 14 millimeter bolt long enough yesterday, but this one is almost there. I drilled and tapped M8 threads into one end of it. That will provide the clamping.
of all the stupid shit that could make this not happen today. The most stupidest, shittiest thing has happened. I put on gloves and I was ready to install the chain. And I can't find the clip for the master link. I've only got one. I used it on the other dyno when disassembling. I clearly remember hearing Gandalf's voice in my head. Keep it secret, keep it safe, my precious. I can't find it. I probably put it somewhere secret and safe. And I can't find I'm it. I'm gonna edit and upload and then drink myself to death. So this is it then. No next time. <laughs>